this is my second lockdown embryology video and this time we're moving into the second week of development so the second week of development after the point of fertilization of the egg by the sperm which was covered in the first video by the end of the first week the developing embryo has arrived in the uterine cavity has settled onto the lining of the uterus the endometrium and has burrowed into it and that's what we're seeing here so we're seeing that embryo having implanted in the uterus and it's already developed a couple of separate layers there's a mass of cells around the outside which is sometimes called the outer cell mass and that's the trophoblast and then an inner mass of cells which is called the embryoblast and I've also labelled up the endometrium the lining of the womb and then the uterine cavity itself as well in this second week of development, we're going to see lots of things splitting in two and we're going to see the appearance of two new cavities. So I sometimes call the second week the week of twos. That trophoblast splits into two layers. It has an inner cellular layer and those cells are fusing together to form an outer layer, which is a big multinucleate mass. So it's basically lots of cells that have merged together. So the inner cellular layer is called the cytotrophoblast, the cellular trophoblast, and that outer multinucleate mass is called the syncytiotrophoblast. Many of the early embryologists were German, so we end up with these very long words with essentially lots of words joined together, and they make a lot more sense if you split them up and look at the individual components. The trophoblast, if you remember from the first video, means the feeding bud, because it's going to be the part of the embryo that forms the placenta, and then syn sitio means together cells, so it kind of describes what it is. The inner cell mass or embryoblast, the bit that's going to become you, also divides into two layers at this point. There's a layer of cells which are cuboid and that's called the hypoblast, that's facing the original blastocyst cavity, and then a layer of taller cells which is called the epiblast. There's that cavity just there, and as I said we're going to see two more cavities appear during this week. Here's the first one just starting to emerge there within the epiblast and this is the very first hint of the amniotic cavity, the cavity that will eventually grow so large that it engulfs all the others and the, the embryo, the fetus as it becomes after week eight, will be swimming around in that amniotic cavity until the moment of birth. I've coloured in the various layers here using colours that resonate with the textbooks like Langmans and Larsons. So the syncytiotrophoblast is in a pine green, the cytotrophoblast I've done in a kind of turquoise, the epiblast I've done in blue and the hypoblast in yellow. That blue and yellow really are standard colours and will help us to track those tissues throughout development. Now here are some blood vessels in the endometrium in the lining of the womb and those are growing larger in response to this implanted embryo. So there we go, that's what this embryo looks like at the end of day eight after fertilization. The trophoblast are split into two layers and the embryoblast are split into two layers as well. Let's move on to the next day of development. And you can see that the embryo is growing, all those tissues are growing even more. And every day it becomes a little more deeply embedded in the endometrium, which actually eventually seals over the top of the implanted embryo. So here are these layers again, the cytotrophoblast, the cellular trophoblast, and the syncytial or syncytiotrophoblast. And then here are the two layers that the embryoblast are split into, the epiblast in blue, facing the amniotic cavity, that new amniotic cavity, and the hypoblast I'll do in the traditional yellow, now the hypoblast faced the original blastocyst cavity, but that is becoming relined with hypoblast cells, which are starting to migrate around the inside of that cavity. And this is the point at which that cavity changes its name. It's now known as the yolk sac. Now this is interesting because it's a yolk sac, which is just full of fluid, not yolk. So it's a yolk sac with no yolk. The only reason it's there really is that you once had ancestors that laid eggs and that's the memory of that. You can see the blood vessels here growing much larger in the endometrium 
and you can see gaps opening up in the syncytia trophoblast. So these gaps are eventually going to coalesce to form little lakes or lacunae within the syncytia trophoblast. So there's one of them, a lacuna. Now we'll just fast forward a bit to day 11 and see how things are progressing. We can see all the same tissues there, that cellular cytotrophoblast, the syncytio trophoblast, which is full of holes now. And we've still got that double layer of the embryoblast as well. The epiblast facing the amnestic cavity and then this, which is the hypoblast, which is continuous with the lining of the yolk sac. And these cells are doing something interesting now as well. They're separating and forming a brand new layer, a brand new tissue layer, which I've shown in orange. And I've just coloured the epiblast blue. So let's label some of these things up. There's the lining of the yolk sac. Here's this new layer of tissue. Now this is mesoderm outside the embryo. So we call it extra embryonic mesoderm. There's the hypoblast in yellow and the epiblast in blue facing the amniotic cavity. Now let's have a look at what's going on with that syncytio trophoblast and these big spaces, these lacunae which are opening up in it. They're becoming larger and larger and opening up right to the edge of the syncytio trophoblast. At the same time, the maternal capillaries have swollen into sinusoids and look, the blood from the maternal capillaries is starting to enter the lacunae of the syncytio trophoblast. So this is the origins of a utero-placental circulation. The mother's blood is flowing into embryonic tissues at this point, just 11 or 12 days after fertilisation. And finally, I'm going to draw what this embryo looks like as we near the end of the second week. I've had to shrink the scale a bit just to fit it on the page. So you can see that the amniotic cavity looks smaller, but actually it's larger than in the previous picture. So what we're seeing here is this double layered structure, the epiblast and the hypoblast, sandwiched between the amniotic cavity and the yolk sac. And that double layer, if you were to float in the amniotic cavity and look down on it, is, is a disc. So we call this the bilamina germ disc. Bilamina because it has those two layers, epiblast and hypoblast. Time to add in the cytotrophoblast and the syncytiotrophoblast, which is now full of holes, lacunae, and the maternal blood is pouring in now from those sinusoids. And that means all the cells of the embryo are benefiting from the nutrition and oxygen being brought to it by that blood. But it does look as though the embryo blast is sort of floating quite separate from those layers of the trophoblast, which are forming the early placenta. They must be connected. There's no point in having that utero-placental circulation if the embryo itself is going to be cut off from it. So it is connected and it's connected via that new tissue layer, the extra embryonic mesoderm, which was very loose and cobwebby right from the very beginning. And now it's become even more full of holes until actually all those holes coalesce to form one big hole. And this is the extra embryonic cavity. Sometimes they call it a coelome. That's another word for a cavity or the chorionic cavity. That's an alternative name for it. So you can see that that mesoderm has ended up lining the whole of the outside of the epiblast and hypoblast and the associated amniotic cavity and yolk sac. And then it's lining the inner surface of the cytotrophoblast as well, but then also connecting that embryo with its cavities to the early placenta via a connecting stalk. And that connecting stalk of extra embryonic mesoderm, that is the precursor of the umbilical cord. So that's what you look like at the end of the second week of development. The bit that's going to be you is just a two-layered disc, a bilaminar germ disc. So you've come a long way in the second week of development, but there's clearly a long way to go still with plenty more growth, lots more folding, cells moving around inside this developing embryo. In the next video, I'll move on to the third week of embryonic development. But I hope you've enjoyed this second week. Please let me know, please like, please share with anybody else who you think might find it useful or interesting. Thank you for watching.